Creator God. You made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. psalm. The earth has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. You soften the ground with showers and bless the increase of it. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. The meadows are clothed with sheep. The valleys stand so thick with corn, they shout for joy and sing. The earth has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us.
Elijah survived for a long time in his Raven Ravine restaurant. But because there was no rain, the brook eventually dried up. What now? Elijah cried to God. I'll die of thirst if I stay here. I am the real real God, God, remember, remember, God said. Not Not some some statue statue made of sticks and stones. So So I've planned planned ahead. There's There's a a widow who who lives lives in Zarephath, not far from here. Go Go and and stay with her. She'll take care of you. So Elijah went to Zarephath, and there he found a widow picking sticks up from the ground. Excuse me, he said to her. May I have some bread and water, please? The woman stopped picking up the sticks and stared at Elijah. I don't have any bread, she said wearily. All I have is a handful of flour in a jar and a few drops of oil in a jug. I'm picking up these sticks to make a little fire. I shall mix the flour and the oil into a cake and bake it on the fire. Then my son and I will eat the cake and die, for that is all we have left. It was a sad story, and Elijah felt sorry for the widow. But then he remembered God was the real God, not some statue made of sticks and stones. And God had told him that the widow would take care of him. So Elijah told the woman what to do. You must trust me, he said, for I serve the real God, and he has promised to take care of us. Make me a cake out of what you have in your jar and your jug. Make a cake for yourself and for your son too. And I promise you that what is in the jar and in the jug will never run out. The woman trusted Elijah. She did what he told her. And just as he promised, no matter how much flour she took from the jar, or how much oil she poured from the jug, there was always some flour and oil left. And so Elijah lived through the drought, even though it lasted for three whole years, with the help of ravens in a ravine, with oil and flour from a widow's jar and a jug, and most of all, because he trusted the real God and not some statue made of sticks and stones. I hope you enjoyed listening to that story. But I wonder if we have some time now just to think of these next few questions. I wonder what would you have done as Elijah the man who needed food so badly What would you have done as the woman who only had enough food left to feed her and her son? And then the stranger comes and asks for what you've got. Would you share it with them? Dear God, we thank you that you care about people all over the world who don't have enough food. Help us to care about them too and do what we can to help. Amen.
some words of Jesus, remembered and recorded by Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable. There was once a rich man, who, having a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, What am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones, and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, My soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, and this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when someone stores up treasure for himself instead of becoming rich in the sight of God. Then he said to his disciples, That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Think of the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storehouses and no barns, yet God feeds them. And how much more you are worth than the birds. Can any of you, however much you worry, Add a single cubit to your span of life. If a very small thing is beyond your powers, why worry about the rest? Think how the flowers grow. They never have to spin or weave. Yet, I assure you, not even Solomon in all his royal robes was clothed like one of them. Now, if that is how God clothes a flower, which is growing wild today and is thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more will he look after you who have so little faith? But you must not set your hearts on things to eat and things to drink, nor must you worry. It is the Gentiles of this world who set their hearts on all these things. Your father knows well you need them. No, Set your hearts on his kingdom, and these other things will be given to you as well. There is no need to be afraid, little flock, for it has pleased your father to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Get yourselves purses that do not wear out, treasure that will not fail you in heaven where no thief can reach it and no moth destroy it. For wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart will be too. Oh, oh, oh.
bless you, God of seed and harvest, and we bless each other, that the beauty of this world and the love that created it might be expressed through our lives and be a blessing to others. The blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, both living and departed, this day and always. Amen.